Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video and this one is sponsored by Video Blocks. Those professionally shot clips that you just saw of uh, life in Japan, I didn't shoot those myself. No, I just grabbed them from the Video Blocks Unlimited library. Sometimes you're making a video, you need a particular shot, you can't get it yourself. Well, that's what this service is all about. It's the best deal in stock footage. You get unlimited downloads from a library of over $10 million worth of footage, After Effects templates, and motion backgrounds. You can sign up for the Video Blocks service using the seven day free trial link in the video description. I'll be back with more info on that, but for now, let's go ahead and get into the video. Now, I've done hundreds of videos here on YouTube, but I have never done a video on this particular topic, that is to say, the topic of using photo reference when making illustrations. I have a drawing here of a woman out for a jog, and let's say that I want to have her jogging down some sort of a road in Japan, and I'm intent on getting the details right. Well, that's when I might turn to photo reference. I have here a uh, picture that was taken from one of my own videos, actually, when I was in Japan. Some of you might recall it, and I sort of freeze frame and printed it out. And this is the, the road that I'm going to have her jogging down. And uh, in this video you'll see what aspects of the photo I use, what aspects I ignore. And I thought what I might even do is to take a smaller version of the photo and put it right here in the upper right hand corner so that it remains in view. Uh, for you, the YouTube viewers, so that you can see what I'm using, what I'm not using, how I'm changing things, how I'm keeping things the same. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just get down the basic sketchy guidelines of the road and some of the key uh, structures on the left hand side. I'm going to do a lot of uh, time lapse in this video. I'll just warn you right now. This is not one of these videos where I expect anyone to follow along and copy everything that I've done here. That's just not what we're doing. I'm giving a general overview of the entire process and, and in particular the way that it relates to using the photo. So let's go ahead and all in time lapse I'm going to get down the basic uh, guidelines of the road. Well, I think I have enough of the lines in place that I can start to talk a little bit about my process. Uh, maybe first I should say why uh, why use photo reference? Uh, should you always use photo reference? Well, my uh, answer to that is uh, it's entirely up to you. Uh, you're not going to hear me using the word should a lot when it comes to art. I think everyone finds their own way of doing things. But why would I choose to use photo reference? I think it's mainly to get uh, authenticity and sort of specific details uh, into an illustration. What happens when you try to draw uh, something from memory, you may end up with a kind of a generic look to it. Like, for example, this uh, sort of reflective surface uh, thing that is uh, strapped onto one of these poles in Japan. Um, you know, I've walked by these things a hundred times while I'm in Japan, but I don't know if I would have remembered that when I sat down to do an illustration of a road in Japan. And all these little details come together to just give your um, uh, illustration a look of authenticity. Now, uh, one of the most important things in this video is to show you the difference between just copying a, f you know, straight up copying a photo exactly and uh, relying on it as a source of reference. Um, for example, I can see, uh, based on this photo, if I do follow along, there's going to be a lot of green over here in the illustration, like this big old blotch of green. And so what I've decided to do is to add some green over here. Well, as you can see, there is no green in the photo uh, in that location. This is more of an artistic choice uh, that I think will make my illustration look better. And the professional artist is constantly sort of trading back and forth. You know, what elements do I uh, keep from the photo? What things do I allow myself the freedom to alter? I'm going to add in lots of little sources of greenery here. Um, for example, some potted plants. Now that's something um, that I've noticed in Japan walking down the street that a lot of people will have potted plants. In this particular photo, no, there are no potted plants. But, uh, you know, again, this is, I'm being, as an artist, you should feel free to uh, be creative and, and alter things from the original photo. Another thing here, this uh, this sign that says 30, what is it, like 30 kilometers per hour? <laughs> there are 30 poles with signs on them on this street. Uh, that's another sort of 
particular specific detail that I might not have come up with if I just tried to draw this uh, from memory. Over here, this curved thing here, I don't know if you can see it from the original photo, it might be a little hard for anyone to know what this is. I happen to be able to interpret that as a, uh, a garage, sort of like a, a roof that covers over your car. Having seen them in Japan, I'm able to sort of interpret that and know. That's another tricky thing about using photo reference. If you don't have the background experience, you might not be able to tell what is that thing. So it's it's sort of a, you know, a lot of times you're uh, relying on your actual mental knowledge of a place uh, in combination with the photo so that you're interpreting uh, things correctly. Well, I think it's time for me to carry on and add further detail with the pencil and then I'll come back and maybe uh, talk a little bit about adding color. You can see that uh, certain uh, things are completely fabricated, like this uh, uh, this sort of fence that I've uh, come up with. Again, just from memories of walking in Japan and seeing these sort of improvised fences on the side of the road. The reason that I did this, the reason that I added this is, uh, again, in the original photo, there's this, this big blob of green, uh, which is not so pleasing to my eye. I felt like we needed a little more detail somehow to balance out uh, all the detail uh, over there. And uh, so, yeah, I allow myself that one thing that comes from the original photo is the the road slanting down a little bit um, presumably to allow rainfall to drain down into this uh, kind of gutter down here this covered sewer I guess it is um, that's another detail that I don't know if I would have thought about if I sat down to just sort of do this randomly in fact I'll probably change this line over here in the background to um, you know, depict that sort of slope to the pavement. And again, you, it's one of the benefits of using uh, photo reference is getting little details like that. I have added, again, other things that um, that I just wanted to include. You shouldn't feel like you have to stick to everything that's in the uh, photo. For example, here in this area, it's a little vague, these shapes. It's a little hard to tell what it is. I've decided to replace it with what will eventually uh, be a, a sort of a bamboo fence, another sort of local detail that I recall seeing in Japan. But notice how here in the photo there's a little square, a little detail of something. I might uh, go ahead and grab that and say, yeah, let's get that in there. Just a little touch like that adds a certain level of realism to it. And I'll be coming back to this again and again and grabbing uh, certain details here and there from the photo. What I'm going to do now is turn to my watercolors to begin adding um, color to the illustration. I might begin to shift this a little bit off so as to make space. I don't want this big, you know, sort of blank rectangle to remain in my illustration. Uh, I do think, though, that it is useful for you to be able to see a little bit of the photo that I'm using. Anyway, I may shift this a little off to the side, and you're going to see me go in time lapse straight into adding a little color by way of uh, watercolor, but I'll be back to explain my choices and, and how the colors relate or do not relate to what we see uh, in the source photograph. Well, I've got quite a lot of coloring left to do, but I wanted to take a moment and explain some of these choices that I'm making. One thing that I'm going for in illustrations is clarity. And when you look over here, I understand that this is a doorway here. Uh, intellectually, I understand that, but visually it's not super clear in the photograph. And so in my illustration, I've darkened that area in considerably, kind of too much at the moment, but I'm going to balance things out later on. Uh, generally, the principle for me is to uh, maintain clarity you never have uh, someone looking at the picture and saying, well, what is that? I don't understand that structure there. Uh, and indeed, over here you could see I just decided to, you know, let's get rid of all of this jumble of detail back here and we'll just leave that space blank. You know, partially because I wanted to have space for this photo here, but also because I think it uh, is more beautiful as an illustration with uh, just letting the picture breathe a little bit there. So I'm going to go ahead and continue uh, doing adding all the colors and probably even go straight from that 
to doing line work. This is not a video about uh, coloring or adding lines. It's really uh, focusing 100% uh, on the aspect of using uh, photo reference. So let's go ahead and finish off all the coloring, all the line work, and then I'll be back with a few more words uh, about completing the illustration. Well, I could keep adding to this illustration for hours and hours, but I think it's time to sum things up a little. Let's bring back that original photograph. Notice these little details, things that I got from that photo. These are things that I never would have been able to recall entirely from memory. But of course, I'm not emulating everything that's in the photo. I got rid of all that stuff in the deep background and replaced it basically with just this telephone pole and a few wires just to kind of uh, liven up this part of the illustration a little. Uh, but before I go, I do want to thank my sponsor, Video Blocks. I was very, very impressed with the quality of their stock footage. They've got aerial photography. They've got all kinds of things that you would never be able to get on your own short of renting a helicopter, which I'm not about to do. Uh, all of it is 100% royalty free and yours to use forever in your personal or commercial projects. With just two downloads, the $99 annual subscription fee pays for itself. But you can try it out for free if you click the link in the video description. You can use the service with their seven day free trial. Uh, users get access to 140 free HD clips valued at $49 per clip. Amazing value there. So thanks again to Video Blocks. Really do appreciate their support. I'm going to go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. And I'll be back with another one real soon.